Oh, it's heavy. Shit. Hello, my sweet angels. It's your girl, Jay, and today I am here with my July wrap-up for 2024. I read a total of 22 books this month, so I will be splitting it up into two separate parts. So without further ado, let us get started. I'm not gonna lie, my reading month did not start off so hot. The first book I'm gonna talk about is How to Break a Boy by Laurie DeVore. I gave this book a one out of five stars. I was not a fan. So this follows Olivia Clayton, who is the second most popular girl at her high school behind her best friend Adrian. When Olivia walks in on Adrian sleeping with her boyfriend, she wants revenge. So she strikes up a deal with good boy Wit in order to get her grades up so that she can escape Buckley once and for all. It took me months and months and months to finish this book because I literally despised every single one of these characters except maybe Claire who is the trio in this friend group. I did not give a shit about any of these characters or what happened to them. Olivia was a terrible human being. And the most frustrating part about this is that Olivia knew she was a terrible human being, evident in the fact that she reiterated the fact that she was a terrible human being over and over and over again. She would go on and on about how bad she felt about being a bad person, but girl, if you feel bad about being a bad person, maybe stop being a bad person. I really didn't think that that concept was as groundbreaking as it apparently is appears to be. Both Olivia and Adrienne are just so toxic for one another. It got to the point where I did not care if they worked it out. Um, this book was not for me. One star. Luckily for me, the next book was a more enjoyable read. It is We Used to Live Here by Marcus Clywer, and I gave this a 4 out of 5 stars. So this follows Charlie and Eve, who buy an old house in the hopes of flipping it. One night, Eve is home alone when there is a knock on the door. A family of five is on the doorstep, and the father of this family claims to have lived in the home when he was younger, and he really wants to show his family around 15 minutes tops, and then they will be out of her hair. Reluctantly, Eve allows them in, but they overstay their welcome, and it's kind of the story of that. So this is apparently a debut novel, which it does not feel like one in the slightest. I read it in one sitting because I was so invested and intrigued by this story. I went into this book very blind, and I do think that that is the best way to read this story. I listened to this on audiobook, and I do think that that is the way to go with this story. It kept me guessing the entire way through. I loved how I was second-guessing everything. I had no idea who to trust, who was telling the truth. I had no idea what was in any of these characters' heads the entire time. The ending was also not what I expected at all, which I think made me love it even more. I was left with so many unanswered questions, which weirdly I wasn't that upset about. I am so excited for the movie that's coming to Netflix. Apparently it's starring Blake Lively, who I love, so I'm very intrigued. I gave this a 4 out of 5 stars. Next up, we have The Lightning Circle by Vicki Van Sickle. This is another one that I gave 4 out of 5 stars. This is told in verse, and it has some pictures sprinkled throughout, which I really enjoyed. But this basically follows Nora. She is escaping a heartbreak that she just had, and she decides that she is going to become a camp counselor for the summer. I've been a camp counselor since I was 14. I'm now 28, so this book really did hit home for me. I actually actually run a summer camp of my own now, so I related to this character on another level. Vicky really encapsulates the vibe of camp, like camp names included. Mine is Pivot, in case you're wondering. I flew through this in one sitting. I think that a lot of themes in this are ones that people can relate to. It focuses heavily on women supporting women, which I really loved. I really enjoyed watching Nora gain her confidence as the summer progressed. The one big complaint I have about this is that I really do wish that we saw Nora a little bit after camp or like maybe coming back a year later. I think that that really would have enhanced the story for me, but overall I really enjoyed it 4 out of 5 stars. Next up I have The Return of Ellie Black by Amiko Jean and I give this one a 4.5 out of 5 stars. This follows Detective Chelsea Cahoon who has dedicated her life to finding missing girls after the disappearance of her sister Lydia 20 years ago. 
Ellie Black has been missing for two years and she is suddenly found by hikers in the woods. The only problem is is that she won't tell anybody where she's been. Ellie seems to be hiding something and Chelsea is determined to find out what that is. I really enjoyed this way more than I thought I was going to. I listened to it on audiobook. It has a full cast and I highly recommend that that is the avenue you take to read this book. I flew through this book in one sitting. I was so invested in the story. Right from when Ellie is found, I needed to know what happened to her. I really loved the multiple point of views in this. I think that it really enhanced the story. I will say that I do think that you should look up some trigger warnings for this book because it does get pretty intense pretty quickly. It is more of a slow burn, but it is so worth it in the end. And I did not see the twist coming, which definitely enhanced the story for me. The next three books that I have are all part of a trilogy. The first is Gilded Cage, second is Tarnished City, and the third is Bright Ruin. These are all by Vic James and I freaking love this trilogy. I actually read this one back in like 2018 or something like that and I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars. This time around I gave it a 4.5 out of 5 stars. I personally think that this trilogy as a whole is so underrated and I highly, highly recommend that everybody check it out. In this society, equals are powerful aristocrats who have magical abilities that they call skills. Those born without skills are forced to partake in the slave days, which are 10 years of their life where they are to serve the equals. The Hadleys, an ordinary family from Great Britain, decide to do their slave days together as a family so they are to serve the Jardines, which are the most powerful family of equals in the land. When Luke, the middle Hadley sibling, is separated from the family and sent to the worst slave town in Great Britain, he hatches a plan with several other slaves to have an uprising, and it's kind of the story of that. Like I said, this was a reread for me because I wanted to remember what happened before I picked up the second and third book in the trilogy, and I liked this so much more than the first time around. I remember reading really enjoying this the first time, but the second time reading it, I was able to see even more from the story. The Hadley siblings are all just so endearing, and you can't help but root for each and every one of them. There are so many terrible, unlikable characters in this book, such as Buddha. She is something else, but I couldn't help but want to know more about them. Like, I loved to hate them. All of them are just so complex and layered, especially Cillian, who is the youngest of the Jardine siblings, was such an intriguing character. He was so multi-layered and so powerful. I needed to know more about him, and I think that the ending was so well done, which leads me to the second book, my favorite of the entire trilogy. I gave this one a 5 out of 5 stars. This one picks up very shortly after the first one finishes. The series definitely gets darker as the story progresses. This one took me out. There were so many twists and turns in this. I felt like I had whiplash, but I loved every second of it. Similar to the first book, we get multiple points of views in this, but I think that it helped enhance the story so much because you really get to see every character's motives. There are so many characters that you think are going to act one way based off of what they did in the first book, but they do a complete 180, and it was so fascinating to see. It was very difficult to determine who you could trust and what they were going to do next because everybody was just so chaotic and I really did love the turn that this took because I did not think that the author was going to go that way but I'm a hundred percent behind those decisions. This one leaves off on a ginormous cliffhanger which leads me to the third book, Bright Ruin, which I ended up giving a four out of five stars. I do think that this was the weakest of the bunch but it was still so good nonetheless. This one again picks up immediately after the second one finishes and it gets darker, not as dark as the second one, but still pretty dark. By the end of this book, my heart was completely ripped out. I didn't know how to act. Um, I am very sad about a lot of things that happened in this book, but in the best way possible, if that makes sense. The reason why I only gave this a 4 out of 5 stars was because I was a little bit disappointed in the ending for the trilogy as a whole. I was just left with a lot more unanswered questions than I hoped for by the end. I'm just really hoping that Vic James decides to write more from this world and with these characters because I truly care about every single one of them, even the nasty horrible ones. So 
Please, Vic James, if you are watching, I need more of these characters. I highly recommend the trilogy as a whole. It is so, so underrated. Next up, I read Don't Tell a Soul by Kristen Miller, and I gave this one a 3 out of 5 stars. This follows Bram, who, after a scandal in her hometown, moves to a secluded mansion rumored to be haunted with her recently widowed Uncle James. In this town, girls go missing often, and Bram is slowly uncovering the secrets that Luth is hiding. This started off extremely slow. I think I was expecting it to be more of a haunted house story, which this is not what it was in the slightest. I honestly only continued reading because I wanted to know what the scandal that Bram went through in her hometown was. There were a lot of subplots in this, and I think the one that I found the most intriguing was about Lark, who is James's stepdaughter, and what happened to her. I did think that things were wrapped up a little bit too easily and conveniently for my liking. It was an okay read. I don't think that it was anything that like blew me out of the water, but it was all right for what it was. I gave it a three out of five stars. Next up, I read Under Rose Tainted Skies by Louise Grunwall, and I give this one a 3.5 out of 5 stars, which seems to be a very unpopular opinion because so many people gave this a 5 out of 5 stars. This follows 17-year-old Nora, who suffers from OCD, anxiety, and agoraphobia. She has not left her house in years. She chooses to watch people through her windows and on social media, but then a boy named Luke moves in next door, and her whole world changes. There were things in this book that I I really did enjoy, such as the mental health representation. I think that that was really well done, but I am not the biggest fan of the love conquers all trope, which this wasn't, but I do feel like it did get close to it sometimes, and that just kind of rubbed me the wrong way. For the most part, though, this did not romanticize Nora's mental illnesses in any way, which I really appreciated. I did really like Luke as a love interest. I really enjoyed how he took the time to understand and research Nora's illnesses and never really forced her to do anything that she didn't want to do. I think that Nora was an amazing main character. I think that she grew so much by the end of the story, and I do think that she was so funny. I loved her witty one-liners. Overall, I did really enjoy this, but those little glimpses of that trope I was not the biggest fan of, and it seems to be an unpopular opinion because a lot of people say that they didn't see that at all in this book, so maybe I'm just super picky, but I give it a 3.5 out of 5 stars. I do still think it's a really good book. Next up, I read Panic by Sharon M. Dropper, and I gave this a 2 out of 5 stars. One day, Diamond is at the mall with her friends when she is approached by a man who offers her a spot in his new movie. Against her better judgment, she follows him to his car and goes to his house. Her friends and family don't know what happened to her, and thus begins the search to bring Diamond home. This had so much potential to be amazing. I really wish that we had gotten more chapters from Diamond's point of view because those were honestly the only ones that I really did care about. The other characters just completely bored me. I did not care about any of them. I just wanted to know more about what was happening to Diamond and how she was going to get out of that situation. So unfortunately, not for me, very disappointed in this two out of five. Five stars. Next up, I read Symptoms of a Heartbreak by Sona Charopita, and I give this one a 2 out of 5 stars. This follows 16-year-old Syra, who is a medical prodigy. She has just finished medical school, and she is now working on the pediatric oncology wing of her local hospital. She meets a boy named Link, who she develops feelings for, but the only problem is, is that he has cancer, and he just became her patient. This book frustrated me so much, especially when it came to Link and Syra's relationship. Syra had such a disregard for Link's health, which I found baffling because she is a literal medical doctor, um, but she cared more about making out with him than anything else. 
And I found it really odd because when it came to every other character and their health, she was so determined to ensure that their stay at the hospital went well and they were comfortable and they were getting the best care possible. So I just didn't really understand why she completely threw away those morals in order to make out with this boy. I also didn't personally feel a connection between Syra and Link, so I didn't really understand why she was risking her entire medical career for this boy that she just met. I would have loved this story so much more if we had gotten Link and Syra having a platonic relationship. I was also not the biggest fan of the subplot of Syra being the girlfriend of a closeted gay character. I just didn't like the way that that ended up unfolding in the story. One thing I really did enjoy about this story though was the emphasis on Indian culture. I do think that I learned a lot from reading this book and I did also really enjoy Link as a character. Overall though I was not a fan of the romance which was a big part of the book so it just was not for me personally but there were other parts that I did enjoy so I gave it a 2 out of 5 stars. The final book that I'm going to talk about for this part of the wrap up is If You Only Knew by Perina Pickett and I gave this a 2.5 out of 5 stars. This follows Corey who has just been released from jail for a crime that he did not commit. His former gang approaches him and threatens him so he goes with them to trash the house of the prosecutor Kent Hopper who put him in jail. Wanting nothing more than a fresh start, Corey goes to Hopper and admits what he did so his daughter Tessa convinces her father to allow Corey to right his wrongs by cleaning up the mess that he made. As Tessa and Corey spend more time together, they can't deny the chemistry between the two of them. This book had a very big case of insta-love, which is a trope that never really works for me unless done in a very specific way, so I wasn't the biggest fan of this romance. I just did not believe the chemistry between the two of them. It felt very forced and ingenuine in my opinion, but I did really like Corey and learning more about his backstory and why he originally joined the gang in the first place. I really liked how much he cared for his family and how he was going to do anything in order to provide them a better life. You couldn't really help but root for him in the end. And then I did also really like Tessa. I really liked how she would fight tooth and nail if she cared about you and would not back down from a challenge whatsoever. I do think that the pacing was a little off. It did drag a little bit for me. Overall, it just wasn't for me, but I do think that a lot of people would enjoy it, so I give it a 2.5 out of 5 stars. Alright everybody, so those were the first 12 books that I read in the month of July 2024. If you're interested in the other 10 books that I read, I will have that up on my channel as soon as possible so you guys can check out part 2 when it is uploaded. Let me know down below if you have read any of these books and what you thought of them, and I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye!